Hey guys. So here we are, sort of a new setup. Um, no new components, but just the uh, layout is a bit different. Um, I, as you can see in my older videos, I sort of had a really sort of sloping, cheap shelf that was starting to warp a bit. So I thought I'd uh, upgrade and get some um, decent cubes um, that I'm really, really happy with. These are made from pine. So they smell delicious. Complete solid wood, so none of the IKEA stuff. Uh, yeah, they're really great, and they've got this sort of cool, almost floating effect. Um, yeah, these are New Zealand made. Um, got them here, which is all nice and supporting the local um, community. Um, so yeah, I guess we start over here. I've sort of got a smaller new arrivals, which sort of goes from the end here up until that gap. So we'll be getting to showing you those shortly. Um, a little box for my seven inches. Uh, which I've just recently cleaned. Um, these are all mainly New Zealand things. Yeah, I might even show some of these later on in the video because I've got some new ones in there. Um, speakers are still the same, the Dali Concepts. Um, and I've just got them on a small chopping board just to help with the vibration and some feet. Um, and banana plugs. Uh, the Technics turntable is still the same, um, except I've got a new uh, map, which is the Oyad, Oyad, O Y A I D E, um, BR12 map, um, with obviously the Autophon 2M black. Um, move over to my amplifier, which I've had for years, which I love. Um, one day I'll consider getting maybe something a bit older or something different just to hear because I've had this for years and I don't really know anything different. <laughs> um, Apart from what I've heard at other people's houses, um, maybe even like a tube amp would be would be amazing, just to hear the difference uh, and the warmer sound and all that. Um, yeah, my headphones, which I've talked about before, just got the adapter in here to plug my headphones into, and uh, my other speaker. But yeah, it's looking uh, much tidier. Um, I'm really happy with how it is, and it sounds so much better having um, the speakers further away, um, and you get a lot more sense of a recording, and you you know you can hear the sound sort of in here a lot more rather than being a bit more, uh, I guess, focused, not focused, a lot more narrow, I guess, it's, it's just a lot bigger. But yeah, um, this again, this is obviously still just, it's probably 40% of the collection, the rest is in storage. But uh, yeah, the A's start here, A, A to D, and then from there onwards is C to, I don't know whether that's F, and then we've got the rest here. Um, and then we've got uh, the New Zealand section at the end and compilations. But yeah, that's it. Um, so I might show you guys some of the records I've picked up over the last few months. Some of these I've had f since before I stopped making videos for a while. So I uh, can't remember what I've shown and what I haven't. But yeah, anyway, uh, let's get into it. Okay, I decided I'm gonna do a flip video. I wanna get through quite a few of these records. Um, I've sort of got more records to show later on, but uh, they're a lot more exciting. There's quite a few grails I've picked up in the last few months, um, and I'd like to talk about them a bit more on camera. Um, but these are just ones I've picked up. I wouldn't say less excited about, but it, you know I don't need to talk about these as much as uh, other ones. So um, yeah, obviously a classic, a record I didn't really get into until the last sort of month or so. This is the uh, two times, uh, well, one's mono, one stereo reissue of the record from a few years back. Uh, yeah, lovely gatefold. Uh, it's a really, really well done job on that. It sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, not that I listen to mono and stereo very much. Um, but yeah, classic record. Uh, obviously one of the first psychedelic records. Uh, I got this for $3 at a record fair. It was a bit dirty, but it cleaned up really nicely. Sergio Mendes presents Edu Lobo, the uh, Brazilian musician. This is really cool, uh, yeah, MVP Brazilian music, bits of bossa nova in it. Um, Braille, uh, a free jazz New Zealand record. Uh, really happy to get this. I might have shown this before. I think I've shown this before too. Uh, UK uh, English folk. UK English folk. Folk. Um, this is a uh, South Indian piece on the uh, Non Such Explorer label. Uh, very cool to have this. Um, they're not ragas, they're just more 
Um, I don't know what you would call them. So they don't necessarily build up slowly um, like some other Indian music. Uh, d definitely worth a listen. I really enjoyed that. Uh, Shiny Beast, a record I've been really enjoying. For ages, all I had was a Trap Mask Replica. And that was so heavy and dense, it uh, sort of not put me off. Because I do really enjoy that record. Uh, it sort of made me not be so inclined to ex explore other beef out. But yeah, I love this record. Uh, I'm, I always have uh, Tropical Hot Dog Night in my head for some reason. <laughs> it's, it's really great. Uh, this is a record I wanted for ages, and I could never find a clean copy. So I picked up a, a Japanese pressing of this. Absolutely gorgeous record. Uh, shooting up, probably could be one of my favorite Eno ambient records. Uh, yeah, fantastic. I look at that cover as well, isn't it beautiful? Frippin' Eno, Evening Star. Eric Dolphy, Last Day. I got this as a gift from a, a close friend of mine here in Wellington. Um, yeah, this is the Fontana release of it. It, it sounds magnificent. Uh, one of Eric Dolphy's last dates recorded in Stockholm with Swedish musicians. Great. Uh, this is the Skeptics, geez, third record, uh, original press on Flying Nun. Uh, quite hard to get these days. Um, noisy, experimental, industrial stuff. Another Eno record I need to talk about. Uh, I got this for $3 again. It's a big score here in New Zealand. Um, and I cleaned it up and it sounds fantastic. Uh, amazing record. I never heard this in its entirety properly until I picked up the record and I kind of wanted to keep it that way um, and, I, and I wasn't let down. It's beautiful. Another Braille record, uh, New Zealand uh, Free Jazz. And that, these, these covers are screen printed. They're really beautiful. Another New Zealand one, Orchestra of Spheres. Uh, they're sort of... The hype sticker says they sound like talking heads. Um, like a modern day talking heads with sort of really homemade instruments in a charming uh, New Zealand way. Uh, my partner said they sound like Tom Tom Club and she didn't she didn't even know about the hype sticker, um, which is kind of a cool thing. I suppose that shows uh, that the hype sticker is quite uh, authentic. This is really cool. Uh, they're an amazing, amazing band live and they play a lot around here. Um, this is on Fire Records. I've, if you want to get something a, a bit different, um, please check this out. It's quite easy to get. Um, Orchestra of Spheres, Brothers and Sisters of the Black Lagoon. Bits of Afrobeat um, in sort of a charming, weird, homemade instruments kind of way. Really recommend that. Yeah, no, another free jazz record on the Braille label. I've been hunting these down. Oh, what are we on? Four minutes. That's not too bad. Um, I'll move this out of the way a bit. Uh, Jerry Garcia. I think this is his debut solo record, but I could be wrong. Um, I'm, I've spent a long time trying to get into The Grateful Dead, and it, it sort of clicked recently. Uh, I really like this record. Some of the tracks sound like Grateful Dead tracks um, from around the same time. Um, some of them, there's like a, a music concrete piece. Uh, really interesting. Some more country stuff. Um, yeah, they've just clicked with me really recently. Um, I remember listening to them, you know, a year ago and I'd have to turn it off. But yeah, something's got under my skin. And I'm really liking the Grateful Dead at the moment. Um, yeah, where have they been all my life? But yeah, fantastic. Jerry Garcia. Uh, Warner Brothers. I think I've shown this before, but Yance, Rosemary Lane, John Renbone, Renbone, yeah, Farah Annie. And this is sort of a. I was talking to Anthony about this, and he reckons it's more blues influence, but it's ever so slightly blues influence. Um, I think the songs are a bit longer, and they're more about storytelling, and it's more about songcraft rather than. Um, technical playing I suppose. I really like this record though, it's it's really beautiful. Um, it's cool. Uh, this is the other 34 Elvis East Ever. I think I prefer this one to um, the Psychedelic Sounds of. Um, again this is the 2LP reissue. The track called Postures is, is so brilliant. Uh, yeah, I really like it. One that I sort of missed out on picking up quite a few times, I managed to get this cheap online. This is uh, Cortex True Pure Blue French uh, jazz, funk, rock, so cool, so funky. Uh, I think this is a Japanese pressing, I could be wrong. No. Oh, actually, no, it's like a, a reissue. Originally came out in 75, I think this is like a 1997 pressing, but I could be wrong. Yeah, Cortex, great record. Six minutes. <laughs> uh, Horizons, this is a, uh, 
as you can see, New Zealand electronic music. A uh, seminal record for New Zealand music, uh, especially in that electronic sound. Bleepy, bloopy, sort of in the same vein. Not quite as great as like, you know, Morton Subodnik and uh, Edgar, Ver you know, all, all those sort of guys. Um, this is a New Zealand equivalent. Really interesting though. It's, uh, you've just got to be in the mood for it, you know. You can't put on this and then go for that. <laughs> They're quite different. Uh, another bloody McCoy Tyner. How many of these have I got? Probably too many. This is really great though. Like I said about every milestone record um, by McCoy, this is brilliant. The one I really want to get is um, Atlantis because it's got Azar Lawrence on it. And he's got, I think he's a killer, underrated saxophone player. There you go, Trident. Uh, yeah, Grateful Dead, Blues for Arla. This is a record that really connected with me um, that helped push me through into the world of Grateful Dead. <laughs> um, yeah. Check this out, I really like it. It's got um, more jazzy elements, more funk elements. Um, yeah, it's it's a later record, but I think it's it's really cool. Um, the first track, you can nod your head to it. Uh, Lord Echo, this is his, is it Harmonies? I always forget the names, oh, it's Melodies. Melodies, this is a, a two LP reissue of his first record. Um, yeah, soul, funk, uh, summery vibes. Uh, highly recommended. I recommended this to a few people actually. It's uh, yeah, it just sounds like summer, makes you feel good. Um, this one is his new album that came out earlier this year. Uh, this is a two times uh, twelve inch version of it. Um, this almost ventures more into not disco, but slight tinges of disco. Uh, awesome. There's some killer tracks on here. Uh, this is this is awesome as well as a few you now know. John Renborn, Sir John, a lot of, um, yeah, medieval style playing, bits of Middle Eastern influences, yeah, absolutely fantastic. All right, almost there, guys, I promise. Jazz for Moderns, Joe Harriet Quintet. Now, this is a uh, 45 RPM uh, recording. This is an unearthed record, an unearthed um, session. Uh, recorded at the BBC in uh, Maidervale, and just as Maidervale, just outside of London, can't remember. Um, really hot, smoking session. Um, I guess it's yeah, post bop. It's Joe Harriet just dying to experiment and get a bit more avant garde. Uh, it sounds it sounds so warm and big, and uh, so much joy in the playing. It's it's a short piece. You can get it quite cheaply. It's it's hundred percent worth a listen. It really grows on you. Yeah, killer. Uh, yeah, Jazz for Moderns, Joe Harriet Quintet, uh, Gearbox Records, 2012, I think. And the last one is, I, I go back with this this piece of music a long time. Um, I bought the CD when this came out many years ago. It was one of the first big New Zealand records I really got into, um, and I saw them a few times around this time. Um, for me personally, I feel like this was their best record and they've sort of gone down hill quality wise a lot more since. But they, they recently released a record this year um, in, I think it was on 4AD, I could be wrong. And it got really big. The ELP, that uh, hip hop, whatever he is, producer, produced it. And I noticed a few people in the VC picked up the new one, Total Depravity, which is really cool to see. Um, I just can't get into it. And it made quite a bit of noise over in the US. I think they played a few shows over there and stuff. Anyway, music on vinyl. I've decided to seize the opportunity of this new found fame and reissue all their back catalogs. So this never came out on vinyl originally, but I do have all the singles on vinyl from this record. Um, what is it, I suppose I should say? It's sort of indie. It's like a... It's sort of like Nick Cave, I suppose, for lack of a better word. But um, a bit of a twist on it. Anyway, that's enough talking. I haven't talked on camera for you know over three months, so that was a lot of speaking. Eleven minutes of speaking constantly. Anyway, um, I'll probably come back and see you all guys in the future at some point. Uh, take care. Thanks to the new subscribers. I seem to have gained quite a few in my uh, break. <laughs> um, yeah, talk to you all soon. See ya.